Hey Miami Lakers, uh, welcome to our daily COVID-19 update in our community. I'm joined by our town manager, Ed Peterman, and we have Rosie Barroso with us for Mental Health Thursday. We know how important that discussion is here in our community. We've seen the stats, 50%, 50% of Americans have said that the COVID-19 pandemic has impacted their mental health. That is a huge number, and that's why we're having these discussions every single Thursday here in our community. I know there's going to be some good news the manager's going to be talking about uh, coming up on June 1st. Some great, great, great uh, news for June 1st and June 8th uh, as we keep getting going back to normalcy here in our in our community. Uh, bienvenido recién aquí en nuestra comunidad. Hoy es el update de nuestro día, de nuestro de COVID-19 de cada día. Eh, tengo conmigo el administrador de nuestra ciudad, el señor Ed Peterman, y también la señorita Rosy Barroso que está aquí para eh, hablar sobre la salud mental. Ya sabemos, hemos visto diferentes estadísticas eh, sobre la salud mental, que el 50% de los americanos están diciendo que el, el coronavirus, la pandemia esta, le ha afectado la salud mental a, a, los, a los recientes por todos los Estados Unidos, que es un número bien, bien, bien alto, porque vamos a tener esas conversaciones aquí en nuestra comunidad, pero para empezar, we're going to go to our town manager to talk about what the numbers are. Uh, and I know we're, he's going to be talking about those numbers. And I think something folks really want to hear is we do know that there's a lot of people recovering from COVID-19. I don't know if those numbers have been released, but that is something important to talk about. I actually saw an interview uh, yesterday, a good morning, a couple of days ago, Good Morning America, and, and Pitbull, a, a local, local rapper, Pitbull, that a lot of you guys know, Mr. Worldwide, he was talking about that. He was, yeah, there's a lot of people that have uh, the coronavirus, but there's not enough discussion on the recovery. And I think just to give people that, that optimism and joy, I don't know if you want to talk about that in some of those numbers. Yeah, the, uh, if you remember, those of you who watched yesterday's briefing, yesterday we had not yet we received the state report for yesterday. So what we were giving you were uh, Tuesday's information. Today again, the state has not uh, published their report uh, yet today. So what I can tell you is that yesterday's report came out and once again, our number is 70. So that number is unchanged. I'm hoping that what they're doing is by the longer delay, this is supposed to be the 10 a.m. report, but here we are past five o'clock in the afternoon and the report has not yet been published. So what I'm hoping is that the state of Florida is being more uh, diligent in making sure that the information is as up to date as possible and hopefully that's the case. Le quería avisar si ustedes que vieron el programa de ayer, eh, si se recuerdan que eh, ayer no teníamos todavía a esta hora por la tarde el reporte diario del estado de la Florida. Igualmente hoy no tenemos el reporte de hoy todavía, pero lo que sí te puedo decir que ayer cuando el reporte por fin se publicó en uh, la página web del estado, que el número no se había cambiado. So, ayer, tarde por la tarde, todavía teníamos el número de 70. Yo espero y ojalá sea que eh, la razón por lo cual este reporte se está demorando es porque están, eh, están tratando eh, de estar seguros que los números están correctos y están al día lo más posible. So, el, el número sigue desde ayer tarde eh, en, en 70. I also want to now, also, if you don't mind, Mayor, just to report a little bit about, uh, we mentioned it yesterday, but finally, late last night, the actual order from Miami-Dade County uh, was published, reopening beaches, pools, uh, hotels. So we've now taken that next step, uh, June the 1st, those uh, types of amenities will be reopened, obviously with restrictions dealing with social distancing but now uh, beaches, uh, pools, the community pools, the condo pools, the HOA pools, those will be reopening. Uh, and also, the, uh, what I also am gonna add to our order is that the pocket parks, the pocket parks that are so important to our neighborhoods, the pocket parks, I, the order that I signed uh, earlier today will reopen the green space in the pocket parks. Eh, le quería avisar que nosotros aquí, específicamente en, en la ciudad de Miami Lakes, eh, vamos a abrir de nuevo eh, la parte verde, o sea, la, la parte de la hierba en los parques aquí de los vecindarios. 
no vamos todavía a poder abrir lo, el área de, 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 de los lo columpios, the uh, swing sets will still not be open, the playgrounds will not be open, but at least the green space and our beaches in our, uh, in our neighborhoods, our little uh, lakefront beaches will once again be open uh, for our uh, residents to enjoy. Well, that's great, great news. We have over 90 uh, pocket parks here in our community, 90 plus pocket parks, which is truly amazing. That's very important uh, information for our residents. Hay más que 90 y pico de los parques pequeños en los vecindarios aquí en nuestra comunidad, so tan importante para reabrir. But just a reminder, something the manager was talking about. So although we will be allowing uh, for condo associations and common area pools and all these associations that have, like Celebration Point, a, a Via Vizcaya, and whatnot that have pools, that doesn't mean that although we allow it, doesn't mean that some of those associations will be reopening. I'm sure that there's going to be some that will, some associations that they have their own boards. Uh, they're going to be making those decisions. And, and does that mean that they have they are forced to reopen, or no. they have that? It's the same way everything works. So the federal government, once they reopen, states can make a decision to uh, either do it or not do it. They can be more restrictive. They cannot be more liberal. The same thing when the state reopens, the counties can have that decision and so forth and so on. So just because the county and now us, the town of Miami Lakes, have elected to reopen those condo and apartment building and community pools, each individual uh, apartment complex uh, or uh, HOA can make the decision whether to reopen it or not. And it's not going to be without limits. It's going to have similar limits to what's being imposed for the beaches with regard to how far apart people have to maintain uh, from one group to the next. Uh, whether you wear a facial uh, covering when you're going to the restroom, those kind of things will be applicable to those community pools. So that's important for everybody to understand. Yeah, it's really important. Same thing with the, with the beaches. I mean, don't uh, when they reopen uh, June 1st, I'm sure a lot of folks are going to want to go to the beaches, but make sure that you look at the information for those individual municipalities, because I'm sure some cities might be opening, some might be holding off. I mean, right. uh, so just make sure you look at that information, because uh, it's not one size fits all. Uh, but real quick, and we'll come back to the COVID-19 coronavirus discussion, but we're going to go to the mental health discussion. I'll break the ice with Rosie and ask her a question. Uh, something I'm seeing in our community and our society is that people are really nervous. I mean, think about it, the novel coronavirus, we don't know what's going to happen. So there's a lot of folks, a lot of nervous folks, a lot of anxiety in our community. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen with schools. We don't know what's going to happen. I mean, talk to folks. How do pe how can people cope uh, with that type of anxi anxiety? Especially, I know there's anxiety for hurricanes. We know what's uh, what's going to happen, what we got to do to prepare. We know what the if it's a cap one, we know how long, more or less, we can calculate. But something like this, how do people deal uh, with anxiety? And what, are you, what are your recommendations? I know you've been on this before, so the folks know you very well. I mean, so what are your thoughts on that? Break the ice for that, and then we'll have a discussion going forward. Um, hi, everyone. I think the best thing for that would be um, stay informed, definitely, from reputable sources. Understand the rules. Um, implement any sort of relaxation strategies you might have and try to keep, keep a clear head. And, and I think trying to understand also like where your rights end and the next person starts. So you don't have to get into any arguments or anything like that. And it's very difficult to try to stay calm when you kind of don't even know what's gonna happen because everything is changing constantly. But you know, I think you've said it a bunch of times that there's light at the end of the tunnel. I, I think if we stay calm, we'll get through it. So any other tips for the community besides that? What are, you, what are your mental health Thursday discussion? What, uh, what do you think? Um, I think it, it's pretty much what I just said now, to just go ahead and try to stay as calm as possible. I know we've had other wonderful professionals on here giving tips, uh, taking deep breaths, uh, the fact that the pools are opening and all that's gonna be wonderful because it gives you a place to go out, to de-stress, to disconnect from being you know, just trapped in the walls of your home, um, turning off the computers a little bit, swimming if you can go to the beach or if you have a pool, and um, always know that if those things don't help, you know, stay in tune with yourself and reach out to a professional if, if you need the assistance. So you heard it. I mean, if you're if you're home, if, if, if you need some assistance or anybody just to talk to me, Rosie, how do they reach you? They can reach me at 305-530-8119 and I can put the link at the bottom of the comments when we're done here. Um, we are still offering free therapy. I know there's other professionals in town also offering free, free therapy. Um, and if you just need to talk to someone, I'm sure many of us here in town are willing to help you with that. 
Uh, very good. If you heard it, free services, reach out, local businesses are willing to help, which we know is so, so, so important. La discusión de la salud mental, Rosy, la persona está muy ansiosa, eh, no sabe lo que va a pasar con el coronavirus, cuándo se va a terminar, qué está pasando con la escuela, qué está pasando con la clínica, ¿sabe? ¿Qué, ¿Cómo lo podemos ayudar a las personas? ¿Qué le podemos decir a las personas que están mirando? ¿Qué pueden hacer? Para, para lidiar con, con el problema de la ansiedad, no saber lo que está pasando, ¿qué, qué tú piensas? Eh, mi opinión es tratar de educarse en la información, saber lo que puede hacer, lo que no puede hacer, lo que, la, la realidad de, de, del virus y cómo se, con, se contrae, ¿eh? se contrae, perdona, eh, y, y, y mantenerse lo más tranquilo posible y también tomar en consideración que quizás que otras personas estén un poquito agitadas también. So, Estar más tranquilo cuando estáis interactuando con otras personas. So, gracias, Rosy. Rosy tiene un programa gratis de la oficina de ella. Eh, si necesita alguien para hablar, eh, tenemos una conversación. Ella está disponible, está dando, proveyendo a nuestra comunidad el servicio gratis de, de la oficina de ella. ¿Cómo te pueden llamar? ¿Dónde te pueden encontrar? Que... Al 305-530-8119. Y también en los comentarios voy a poner la información de la oficina. Y también hay otros profesionales en el town que también están dando servicios gratis. Se puede comunicar conmigo o mirar el Prior Resource Page. También hay otros profesionales que pueden buscar la información. So, lo viste ahí. Mental Health Thursday is so important to keep having that discussion here in our community. Uh, thank you, Rosie, for, for giving back, for volunteering. And thank you to all the other providers uh, that are giving back. So, that's so, so, so important. Uh, Mr. Manager, one thing that, 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 and I know we probably don't have that information, but I think hopefully we get more and more, is, is uh, folks that, that recover. And I think one thing that a lot of people tell me is like, hey, well, I want to see more stats on, on recovery. And I think what we've seen is that some folks are asymptomatic, right? There are, I, I think we saw in the, uh, just by what we did from the COVID-19, those 3% of folks that had uh, the coronavirus in the county, it was about 6%. 6% of our residents, that's 1,900 people. I mean, that's a lot of people. Um, so I know those are the stats you're getting. What do you recommend for people asking for that information? Because I think it brings uh, a sense of normalcy, right? When you tell people, hey, uh, yes, is it highly infectious? Yes, we know that an indoor, especially indoors, the coronavirus is highly infectious if you're not wearing the proper PPE. But we do know that the rate, you know, not only asymptomatic, but that folks are recovering is, is higher than it's even being discussed. I mean, what do you recommend to folks that are nervous about that and can't get that information? I know it's hard for us, as even the town government, to get the, the recovery numbers. I mean, what, what's your recommendation to folks? Yeah, to it's, it's important for people to realize that when I say that we have 70 confirmed cases, that does not mean that we have 70 cases right now with that people have the coronavirus. Obviously, we're now a month or two and a half months into this. So the people who were originally uh, sick are now no longer sick. They go into that uh, group of people that have now built up immunities. Uh, so le quería avisar que cuando yo digo que el número de casos confirmados es 70, no quiere decir que hay 70 personas co activamente ahora con la enfermedad. Ya llevamos dos meses y medio eh, lidiando con esta eh, in, in, eh, epidemia, pero so, hay mucha gente de los 70 que se que comprobaron positivo aquí en Miami Lakes, que ya han pasado, que ya se han recuperado y que más, ya actualmente no están eh, contagiosos, que ya han eh, establecido su contra anti uh, antivirus y entonces ya están uh, protegidos contra contra este virus. Yeah, so we know how important that that is and a, a couple things. I know we still have um, the the banner program. Uh, Clara, so how many folks have already bought banners for seniors? We have 65 confirmed banners sold. So 65 people have bought already the banners that are going to be going on 154th. Uh, that program program ends June 7th and that is for high school seniors. Uh, you don't have to go to high school here in Miami Lakes. All you have to do is be a resident of our community and, and you're eligible for to be on that banner anywhere on 154. So 65 have been sold and that ends uh, June 7th. So that's, uh, that's very, very important information. I know also Saturday at Royal Oaks Park from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. We'll be doing the, the antibody test again. It is a blood drive, so just remember that it is a blood drive, but they will be testing for the antibody. 
uh, which we know is so important. I know last time 3% of everybody tested, uh, tested positive for the antibody, but it's important to get that information. Uh, and, and we're not saying you can't get coronavirus again. I think that's one of the things people talk about. They don't know, they're not for sure. But we, what we do know is that if you have the antibody, you then become eligible to donate plasma. And there's already a bunch of studies ongoing that it may be helping people who are in a very bad situation in the hospitals right now with, with coronavirus. So we encourage everybody, come out on Saturday, donate blood. If you, if for some reason you, you were asymptomatic and it comes out positive that you had the coronavirus, you become eligible for plasma. And we definitely encourage people to donate plasma because you could possibly save uh, somebody's life. We're, we're hearing more and more of that, which I think is so, so important. Este sábado de la 11 de la mañana, 5 de la tarde, en el Parque Royal Oaks, estamos donando sangre, pero también vamos a hacer el examen del coronavirus, el anticuerpo del coronavirus que es tan importante. Sabemos que si tiene el anticuerpo, entonces puede donar lo que se llama el plasma, que entonces se puede usar para, ojalá, salvar vidas en los hospitales de las personas que están muy mal del coronavirus. Y, y también le estamos haciendo para todos los muchachos que están, se están graduando de high school, en todas las luces de las 154, estamos poniendo algo bonito para ellos. Eso está, se está vendiendo en el website de la ciudad, ya más que uh, 75, se han, se han 75, ¿verdad? 65. 65. Eh, se han vendido ya, eh, eh, que es bien, bien, bien bonito. So, si están interesados, están en la página web de la, de la ciudad. Anything else you want to add? Yeah, I just wanted to real briefly speak that the, just for anybody who's, who's looking at that uh, banner program, the cost of that banner program, it's uh, cost neutral. In other words, the town is not making any money off those banners. Whatever the cost of producing the banner, putting the banner up, and then afterwards we do, uh, re, uh, removing the banners, that's the only thing that we're charging for. So I wanted everybody to be aware, it's not a money maker for the town, we're doing it as a service to all of those families that have graduating seniors uh, in a way so that they can honor their, uh, their graduates. So, and finally, the last thing I wanna say is, people always ask, well, what's next now with the reopening plan? I could tell you that there's a working group already working, they have drafts of a plan, that are being vetted by the medical professionals. The next thing that's gonna happen is gonna be the reopening of summer camps. Hopefully that will happen June the 8th. So I can tell you that that's already underway. And once that uh, is done, signed, sealed, and delivered and published, then I believe that they'll start working on some of the other dynamics like modifying uh, the capacity limits of some of our businesses, reopening some businesses that are still closed like gymnasiums. So those are gonna be the works that will happen uh, after the uh, opening of the summer camps, June the 8th. Yeah, that's great, great news because one of the, the, the rationales when you talk about reopening the economy, how can you reopen the economy without opening up summer camps and giving people that ability? Same thing with schools. I mean, how do we, if we open up summer camps and schools don't reopen in August, then what happens with, I mean, right. with the economy? So those discussions, not only need to be, be happening right now, but those plans need to start getting solidified. I know they're already happening on the county side. We'll be following with the school district because that's the only way that we move forward. And we had, especially for our kids, you could only imagine how stressful this has been for the kids in our community. Uh, now they're home. Uh, today I did a, a Zoom with, with some of the kids at our Lady Lakes, second graders, and you can see that new normal. Uh, how it is, and I know it might be fun at first, but I think a lot of them are yearning to, to get back to PE and having fun with their kids. Uh, with yeah, kids. I think, Mayor, people lose sight of uh, school as important as it is for education, but part of that is the social interaction with other kids. That's really the hub for kids and their social life is all surrounds their activities with school. So that's a big uh, piece of their life that now they have to put on hold and hopefully the sooner that that uh, gets uh, reopened, that's gonna be great for the for the kids and their, their social interaction with other friends and so forth. So you heard it, Miami Lakers, we're gonna check. We are live on Facebook, on Twitter, and on YouTube. So we're gonna double check if we have any questions. Randy, Clarissa, we got anything on uh, we got anything on Twitter, Facebook, so do, or? Uh, Patricia asks, when is the Shoeless Gym on Main Street opening up? When is the Shoeless Gym on Main Street opening up? 
the exact date of them opening up, we don't know, but we will let you know when they're eligible to open up, which should be very soon, right, Mr. Manager? Yeah, uh, I think that everybody in the community is anxious for all of the uh, fitness and gymnasiums to open up. Uh, I know I, I'm an early bird. I usually go to the shoulders in the mornings, so I'm uh, looking forward to it too. And like I said a few minutes ago, the next thing on the reopening uh, list is going to be the summer camps, and I believe that gymnasiums, are going to be soon thereafter. So uh, I would say probably sometime around the middle of June. And I, I don't know uh, for a fact, but since the uh, uh, summer camps are going to open June the 8th, I'm hoping that by the middle of June or soon thereafter, the gymnasiums will be able to reopen. Yeah, and you're seeing a trend, right? June 1st, beaches, condo pools, uh, June 8th, summer camps, uh, sports programs. Uh, which are really important and hopefully it goes on June 15th or whatever that mid-June. But just remember, just because somebody's eligible to reopen doesn't mean that that's their timetable. So uh, while that may be happening, we'll definitely announce it because we know how important, even things that we take for granted, right? Even a gym, how important that is for, for our communities and all the little things, you know, you take one thing here, one thing there and how that impacts uh, people's mental health, right? I mean, just by not having the ability to work out or or whatnot, you know, so. Uh. Yeah, and, and Mayor, if I may, the, uh, those of you who have gone to our website to look at the guide, initially when the, uh, the businesses were reopened, there was a, a guide that really spoke to specifically by industry, by industry, all of the different rules with regard to uh, social distancing, sanitation, facial coverings, all of those rules were put into a guidebook. We posted that guidebook on our website at miamilakes-fl.gov forward slash coronavirus and it was on there. Now that they're reopening the beaches, they updated the guidebook. So if you happen to have gone to our website and downloaded the guide, all they're doing is they're adding to the guide and updating it. So please be sure, I know it's already been posted to our website, so on there already is information with regards to pools and beaches. Uh, so get the latest version of the guide by going to our website and you'll be able to find it uh, on our resource page uh, at the we, uh, web address that I uh, mentioned to you. And as things continue to open, then they'll update the guide and we'll have the most up-to-date version of that guide on our website. That's great news. In Espanol, para que sepan, ya junio primero, la, la, la playa y la piscina, los condominios. Junio 8, ya está hablando de los summer camps y los programas para los muchachos, los deportes y eso. Y vamos a verse en medio de junio para reabrir los gimnasios y eso que es tan importante. Ojalá que un poquito más temprano, pero la realidad es que tenemos que esperar para el condado que lo, que lo deben hacer, eh, que es tan, tan importante. Are there any other questions on there? Yes, the last question is basketball courts. When do basketball courts open back up? Listen, I'm a basketball player, so is the manager. If it were up to me, I would open them up. You know, we would have opened them up yesterday, but the reality is if we have three half courts in our community. There's obviously the bigger one that is Miami Lakes Optimist. That's the school district, right? So it's a school district decision. But in, in half court, I know the rules that the county gave, I think you could only have three people. Listen, we all know a pickup game just with three people, that doesn't work. You know, nobody's just gonna go out to a basketball court and, and play a game of horse or something like that. I mean, you really wanna play. So it, it becomes very difficult for social distancing. But I, I want to see them open it up, open it up as soon as possible. What do you? Think? Yeah, the, the difficult thing with the half court basketball uh, courts is the ability to enforce it, right? So we have our police officers that have done a great job. We've had our uh, staff at many of the parks that have uh, been helping to in the enforcement, and we actually repurposed our school crossing guards instead of furloughing them or firing them or dismissing them. Uh, laying them off, we used our school crossing guards to help us with the uh, enforcement of our provisions in the parks. So the unfortunate thing is that the funding for the school crossing guards c it finishes together with the end of the school year. Normally the school crossing guards uh, take a break during the summer and that is, uh, so the funding is not there to continue them. But I believe that the, we, also, we actually started to have internally the discussion about basketball courts so I wouldn't. I, I think that we'll be ready to make an announcement, maybe within the next couple of weeks, about being able to reopen the basketball court. So I think we're getting close. We're not there yet. But I, I know part of the county rules were like you could only have three people on the court. Yeah, actually, I think I believe it was two since 
uh, two, each of them had to have their own uh, basketball. They couldn't play like a competitive game. So it was very limited what the county rules allowed. And we didn't think it was worth the risk to open up our courts uh, because the enforcement, being able to make sure that people were adhering to that, was going to be a little overwhelming uh, and uh, quite a burden for the for us as a small town. Yeah, and I think those rules are, are very difficult for, for basketball players, right? I mean, you, know, you all watched Jordan's last dance. Everybody wanted to get out there and start playing some hoops. But yeah. having those rules that the county has right now, it's really impossible to even have a, a pickup game. You can't have a pickup game. Right, right under the county rules correct um so that's where that's where we're at right now you know hopefully we can reopen them sooner rather than later and go back to some normalcy with uh with some real basketball right they so. can play horse two guys they can play horse that each have to have a basketball that's it you gotta have separate basketballs you gotta get off the court and then, yeah it's it's complicated yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, anything else uh twitter uh, may hurricane season officially starts monday and we want to remind my neighbors of the disaster preparedness sales tax holiday, which begins tomorrow and extends through Thursday, June 4th. What well, date? During, during the sales tax holiday period, qualifying items related to disaster preparedness are exempt from sales tax. Sales tax holiday starts tomorrow. Hurricane season is right as soon as it's about to start. Okay. We've already seen two, uh, two named storms. We're at Bertha. So it's really early compared to what the, so they're pre the normal uh, calendar, so. But just know that we're prepared. Obviously we're still under state of emergency when it comes to the coronavirus, but our staff is doing a good job. Our incident command structure is in place. We are prepared if, hopefully not, but if anything were to happen, we will be there for you. And unlike a novel coronavirus, uh, that's something we've already gone through and we already know what to do and our systems and processes are already in place. Last year, thankfully nothing happened, but we were prepared if the storm was going to happen last year. So our folks are doing a really good job and they're prepared. But yeah, the, the sales tax holiday starts tomorrow. So please, please, please take advantage of that. Go out, prepare, get whatever it may be, uh, all the supplies, the, the, uh, the, the flashlights. The batteries, all that stuff, make sure that you're prepared. I think part of the recommendations is that you should have at least supplies for seven days, right? I mean, yes. that, so the recommend what it's recommended, get enough supplies for seven days. Uh, and that's what the governor recommends and, and all the emergency managers recommend. I don't know if any, anything else you want to touch upon. No, that's it, exactly. You have to be self sufficient for a, a limited period of time before local government will come in to provide help. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that everybody stocks up and gets the necessary items that they need to be able to be self-sufficient for a few days before uh, help arrives. So you heard it. Eh, mañana empieza eh, lo que se llama que, que no, no te cargan el sales tax para las lo, cosas que va a comprar, comprar para el huracán. So va a empezar lo que se llama el, el, season, de, el season del huracán ya la semana que viene, pero eh, mañana empieza eh, lo que se llama el, el Hurricane Sales Tax eh, Holiday. Eh, so mañana se pueden salir, comprar sus linternas, eh, la batería, todas las cosas que necesita por siete días. Esa es la rec recomendación. Y no tienen que pagar el 7% que se paga aquí en el condado Miami-Dade, en la ciudad de Miami Lakes. Eh, so estoy seguro que empezando mañana saquen y cogen su, sus necesidades para para el season de huracán, ya el equipo nosotros aquí en la ciudad estamos listos para si algo, eh, si algo pasa, ya, ya hemos pasado varios huracanes aquí y están 100% listos para, para servirle aquí. Anything else? Twitter, uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube, good. So thank you Miami Lakers and remember something very, very, very important, especially with the, uh, the sales tax holiday starting tomorrow. Shop local, eat local, enjoy local. Keep everything here local. That is so, so, so important. Keep stimulating our economy uh, because we know that, that our town is strong. You heard it yesterday from our town manager talking about our budget. Uh, although there are a lot of cities going through budgetary issues, uh, we're fortunate that we are coming out of this pretty strong uh, and our budget going into next year will, will be okay. Uh, so just make sure that you keep spending those dollars here locally. Uh, shop local, eat local, enjoy local. Anything else you want to add, Mr. Manager? No, just as a follow-up to the budget item, when we start looking at next year's budget, the uh, main source of revenue for our town are uh, property taxes. And I just uh, there's a report that I saw yesterday dealing with, since nobody is 
uh, buying or selling homes, the, the amount of homes that are for sale, the inventory is really down. So those of you who understand the economics of uh, supply, demand, and price, prices of homes actually is going up. So the tax base, which is good for all of you homeowners out there, the value of your homes is actually increasing due to the limited supply of homes for sale. So uh, that bodes well for us to be able to balance our budget going into next year. Uh, and I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Manager. Rosie, anything else you want to add before we sign off? Um, just to stay focused and stay positive and we'll get through this or we're getting through this. And like I said, reach out if you need additional help to any professional. Got it. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you for participating and leading, being one of the leaders with Council McCoyazo on our mental health initiatives here in our community, which is going to keep moving forward. Hopefully we keep this as a permanent every single Thursday, have a discussion with a healthcare mental health provider here in our community. And I know you're providing free services for our residents. So thank you uh, very, very much for that. And if there's any topics in specific that you want to hear myself or someone else talk about, definitely let us know, send the comments and a message. And we can cater to specific topics. So thank you, Miami Lakers. Saturday, blood drive, COVID-19, antibody testing. Uh, make sure you reach out to us. Let us know anything we can be of service. Our, our staffs here, the entire council, all of our volunteers. The good news is what I'm seeing happening in our community, more and more folks are getting rehired. More and more folks are going back to work, which is a great, great, great positive. Uh, now we got to get to the point where we open up 100% all of our businesses, but there is Forget about the light at the end of the tunnel. Actually, the tunnel's right there. We're, we're, we're heading out of it very soon, and I know we talk about it every time. You know, it's it's something that we're surpassing. Not that we will surpass, it's something we are actually surpassing uh, currently. So keep being positive, keep, ha keep the faith up, know that we're here for you, and take care of Miami Lakers. Shop local, eat local, enjoy local. Take care.